This video will be demonstrating a high septal strip preservation rhinoplasty technique. You can see the patient here on the operating room table before we get started. She's got a dorsal convexity, which is what's bothering her the most. I chose to do an open technique here. The high septal strip will be demonstrated. In addition, we'll use the piezoelectric device in order to shape the bony cap and reduce the bony portion of the convexity. We'll get started with marginal incisions. This is made with a 15 blade. We carry this just through the vestibular skin. Once we're through the vestibular skin, I'll have my assistant retract the vestibular skin down. And here I am using sharp dissection to develop the plane. The correct plane in this area is subperichondrial. So you actually wanna keep dissecting until you're certain you're in the correct plane. It can be a little, little misleading at first, but there is actually a tough fibrous layer on the cartilage and that's the perichondrium. And once you're under that plane, it actually comes up fairly easily. Here you can see I'm finding the correct plane in the dome area. And once you've got it, you can see that it's a pretty easy plane, just sweeps very easily. Uh, there's usually no bleeding whatsoever. Once we're in the correct plane, you can usually bluntly dissect to expose the entire lateral crura all the way up to the scroll ligament. Here I am just exposing the scroll ligament a little bit more, making sure that I'm in the correct plane. As long as you're subperichondrial, you'll elevate the scroll cartilages uh, and the muscle within the scroll ligament up. Here I am trying to find the correct plane at the scroll, and I wanna get right down onto the perichondrium of the uh, upper lateral cartilage so I can continue that dissection up in a subperichondral plane until we reach the nasal bones. This is a, a caudal dissector, which I think works really well in this portion of the dissection. Again, in the subperichondral plane, it's, it's an easy plane, it's bloodless. Um, you'll know if you're there or not. If it's bleeding, you're in the wrong place. <clears throat> as soon as you can feel the edge of the nasal bone, uh, the easiest thing to do is just take a knife, sharply incise the periosteum, once you've got the periosteum in size, then again with the caudal elevator, you can uh, find the subperiosteal plane. And again, if you're in the right place, it elevates quite easily and bloodless. Here we are dissecting all the way up to the nasal sidewall, the mediocanthus, out on to the maxilla a little bit, and then up to the nasal dorsum. So we've completed the opening process. I've made the transcaliomelar incision and we've dissected the dorsum in a subperichondral and a subperosteal plane. And now we're using the piezoelectric device. So this is an ultrasonic device. Um, the tip vibrates and when it interacts with a firm surface like bone, it actually emulsi emulsifies the bone. The tip is cooled with a jet of saline so you can see the saline actually keeping the tip of the instrument cool. This is a rasp, so it's similar to a mechanical rasp that you would use to take down the bony cap and shape the dorsal and lateral keystone areas, uh, but it's, it's not mechanical um, pressure we're applying here. We're just allowing the instrument to slowly melt the bone away. It's a very efficient process. It's, it's very precise. You don't have any sharp edges. You don't have any unintended um, uh, bony fractures. You can be very precise with how much bone uh, you're removing. And the instrument I'm using there, the retractor, actually has a suction port in it. So as the irrigation flows through the tip of the instrument, it's suctioned out through uh, the port in the retractor there. So what we're doing now is taking down the, the bony cap. As we all know, the, the bony hub is really uh, mostly cartilage but the cartilage grows in a way that pushes up the nasal bones and there's a thin bony cap overlying the cartilaginous bump. So the piezo device is really a nice way to uncap and reduce the bony portion of the convexity and exposes the underlying uh, cartilaginous convexity. I'm working at the lateral keystone area, again, just shaping these bones, uh, narrowing the nasal bones just a bit, as well as weakening the bony cartilage junction, which is gonna help us uh, flex the dorsum down. So we're starting the high septal strip. I've marked the W point where the upper lateral cartilages diverge from the dorsal septum. I use a curved sharp scissors here and I engage the cartilage 
right at the W point and I slide the tip of the scissors underneath the upper lateral cartilages. I do this by feel. You can just advance the tip of the scissors slowly, cutting right under the dorsum until you reach the ethmoid bone. You'll feel that with the tip of your scissors. Then you know you've completed the first cut and the dorsum should be completely separate from the septum. Now the second cut's a little more challenging. I use a 15 blade on a long handle and you wanna start about five millimeters or so below the first cut, right at the ethmoid bone. And then as you come more caudal, you wanna taper it to two to three millimeters. Be very conservative here. You don't wanna to remove too much cartilage, especially in the super tip area. Once you've completed that cut, then you'll need to separate it from the bone. I use a freer elevator for this. It should separate pretty easily if you've got all your cuts completed. And then you just need to go in and fish out your cartilaginous strip. Again, be conservative when you start. You can always remove a little bit more if the dorsum needs to come down more. Now, this isn't always necessary, but it was in this case. This is a lateral keystone area release. So I take a sharp caudal and I'm separating the upper lateral cartilages from the nasal bones. And you, again, need to be conservative, go slow. You don't want to damage the cartilage and you don't want to produce too much instability here, but you do need to separate this area in order for a big hump to come down. So I'm just checking to make sure that I'm happy with the degree of mobility with the cartilaginous dorsum. So once I've got enough mobility and I know I can flex the dorsum down, I'm going to use a stabilization suture. This is a 4 PDS suture on an RB1 needle. I start on the right side and I pass it through the septum into the left side. Now I'm going to take the needle <clears throat> and from the inside of the nose, I'm basically trying to get this, the tip of the needle between the upper lateral cartilage and the dorsal septum right at the K point, right at the highest point of the dorsal convexity. You can see I'm grabbing the needle and then I'm trying to get this on the other side of the dorsal septum, between the dorsal septum and the upper lateral cartilage on the other side. I wanna be sure I don't grab any of the upper lateral cartilage because that can distort the middle third. And now I've got both ends of the stitch on the same side of the septum. So I'll reach in here and grab the needle. And then once you've got that out, now you can tie your knot. So the knot is kind of a slip knot. So I have my assistant help me. I make a loop and then I hand her, I go around both ends of the suture and I hand her the stitch twice. And then I go through the loop that I've made. And that allows you to kind of slip this knot down and adjust the tension. Uh, you wanna be sure that you've got enough tension when you're sewing inside the nose, this is a really key stitch. It's gonna hold the bump down. It's gonna flex that joint down. And then once you've got it, throw a few square knots in it to make sure it's locked into place and be sure that you're happy with the position of your dorsum. I usually place two or three of those sutures depending on how big the bump is. Here I am just checking the position of the dorsum. You can see that the bump is down. We've got a nice smooth dorsum. Uh, at the appropriate height and now we're ready to move on to the tip. Just to remind you this is her view on the table before we started surgery and then this is at the completion of this procedure after we've done the tip plasty and closed everything up. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions just leave them in the comments below.